What's going on ladies and gentlemen, hit pause back with the next part of this tutorial series on getting this AI guy working here. So in the last video we did him um, taking on a hit reaction which we were able to blend in with him um, locking or idle just right here in cat rig so we don't have to worry about it on Unreal, it's kind of handy. And now what we want to do is in this video, we're going to let the ants actually return fire. So they're going to attack, and we're probably going to give them two attacks, fairly simple attacks, but they do need them. And the idea is probably, I may or may not give him a walking attack. I kind of don't want to, to be honest with you. I kind of want him to have to stop when he bites you. Um, but I don't think it's going to be an issue if we want to do it. So basically, I just need to ignore the hit reaction. And now he should just be walking. I also want to get rid of the keyframe here. So I'm just animating here. Doot, 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 doot. And then we'll come here to... I always forget that this isn't part of the cat rig, so I keep clicking on it, expecting this stuff to pop up. That's why you see me go up, 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 back and forth, just in case anybody's wondering. Idle, we need that to be not ignored. Um, we don't want the head look. We don't want the walk details. What is this adjustment world? Okay, this adjustment world is a layer that I added that I never did anything to. Um, okay, so we have has food, hit reaction, and now we're going to do another... Again, this is going to be based off of this animation so that all i got to do is stop my animation and he'll continue to do his idle and it'll just kind of all work. So, let's add another local adjustment. And we will call this um, attack. And I believe that not everybody does this, but um, most people do believe in anticipation in the attack moves. Give the player a chance to react. Give them at least a solid, uh, pretty much a solid second is my opinion. Um, a half a second is a little quick for most people to react. So if there's going to be like, say, a monster is going to do like a big swing and it's going to smash the ground and cause a ripple across the ground, and the way to avoid it is to not be on the ground, so you have to jump. And But you can be standing right next to him and jump, right? Um, if he just goes BAM and slams the ground and you get hit, that's not fair, right? If he's just like, hey, guess what? You're dead, you know? That's not fair. He's got to go... So that you know to jump, right? It's only fair. Of course, that's not how it works in the real world, but that's how it works in the games. So we're going to do that. We're going to give him... Um, about a second of anticipation for you to get away. 30 frames a second. Should be fairly obvious at what point we're going to start that. So, <clears throat> question is, is do I want him to go back like this? Or do I want him to go up like and, and rotate? Like, what do I want him to do? Do I want him to Do something like this. And then how about... Now this I can't do looping. So it goes up, that's fine. But now... Actually, I am going to use angle snap. I just want to do 5 degrees. Uh, let's actually copy that, and then I'll go 10 degrees, boom, boom, and then we'll do that once or twice. So he shakes his ass. Maybe that's not fast enough. All right, let's do a little trick then. Okay, we'll move this. I'll move this out, okay, and let's see, so I just got to make sure that my sequence is correct, so left, right, left, right, left, 
I need another right because if I loop from here it's just going to be left and then left again. So I got to take one more and then I can pretty much officially just grab a couple of them. Go like that. Uh, actually get one more. Okay, so it keeps wiggling, but I want to speed this up. So to do that, what we can do is we don't use the curve editor. We can actually use the dope sheet. This thing is dope. And I believe what I do, no, I don't do that. I think I can do this. There's a thing, I, I don't really know how to do this. I'll be honest with everybody. So it's like select time, and I drag across. Okay, I don't know if I have to have all the keyframes selected. Uh, and then there's like a scale time and I think you can just drag that down so I can pull that back down to 30 so about 50 percent like there and I let go and now I have sped it up you can reverse it so the dope sheet is where you do stuff to fiddle with the um, you know the, the, the timing of everything uh, if you want to you can do that in in the curve editor but you have to manually move each keyframe you might as well do that here so the dope editor, uh, you know, actually will let you take the whole thing and scale it, which you can't do normally here. I kind of wish you could. I'll be honest with you. I wish I there was a thingy I could hold where I scale these out, and it would do it from the zero point or something. I don't know. Or maybe, I, yeah, I guess that would work. That's all I need. So okay, so he goes up. Um, see, this is the reason why I kind of want to not not do a running attack is because I kind of want him to do you know kind of do something where he raises his feet up or something or gets all ready to lunge you know or at least like you know moves them all back or something I don't really know what I want him to do yet I'll be honest so I guess this needs to come down And like I was saying, if I do want to have him do um, whatever I'm doing in the run animation, I need to avoid any kind of uh, foot animation uh, on this particular... Because I don't want that when he's running. Probably don't. But it may work. I don't know. So the smart thing to do would be attack body, attack legs, attack feet. I'll have another layer for it that I could either blend in and out, maybe even partially in and out, to get it to go clean while he's... If he wants to do the attack while he's running, it might work. I don't know. Um, so he goes in, and then he should lunge back just a little bit, and now he should spring forward as far as he can go, pretty much. Which is about there. I haven't done his teeth yet. Okay, so he goes whoosh. Now he should overshoot that and he should start settling back down. So let me just get the settling back down locked in here real quick so that, that goes back. Okay, so here he should be still forward maybe down a little bit so no, that needs to be way more forward still without hyper extending any legs it's kind of I kinda I thought I was in a fairly symmetrical pose here but I'm getting a different valid, different results between the two rear legs so something isn't symmetrical one of these is not as far back as the other you can see that isn't so this needs to come forward probably these need adjusting I'm not gonna do it I am gonna do it in another layer on the feet but I'm gonna do it after the fact I'm just gonna let them stretch and I'll fix them in another layer I need him I need his body to go as far so, okay and then here he needs to go in a circular fashion down probably tilt just once I always like to do the main body and just a little bit maybe of the head.
The question is whether or not I want him to just go say, okay, bite, right, and that hits them, and then now, now contact is over and he's settling down, or I could say, bite, he's locked onto him, and then rips himself away. You know what I'm saying? I wonder if that would be cooler. Like he actually got you. But here's the thing, that's going to look freaking stupid as I walk away from him and he stopped, right? Unless he actually attaches to me for a second. Huh. Huh. Because obviously I could bring in my rat, put the rat at zero, zero, animate the spider, or the ant, I always say spider, the ant jumping on him and grabbing him and the rat trying to get him off and it's all perfectly hooked together and then it biting him on the head and then Gil pops his head off and, and eats his corpse, right? I mean, we could do the, the, the pairing animation. That's a pain in the ass. You gotta line things up, but it's doable. So, I'm trying to think. Now, yeah, but given the fact that I don't want to have to worry about that kind of shit, I'm not gonna have him grab and then be stuck on you like this or anything like that and then rip away. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna play it the way it's going. Just bite and then kind of, you know, goes forward a little bit. Let's, let's play that in real speed. Let's see. Okay, so it's not fast enough in the lunge forward, but that's okay. I can fix all that in the curve editor. As long as the movement's where I need him to go, it's about right. I think. And then we'll take the last one. Okay, so just down. That should happen earlier. Okay, so it kind of goes forward like a like a little bit of a dart. All right. Let's go local here. Let's do the mouth. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to have these twitch. Shit. So we select time. We make a hold control and click that guy. Scale time to 50%. I'm not holding anything. I just tried to get that as close by hand. It's kind of difficult to get right on 50%. In case you were wondering. Okay, and then as he's coming forward, I actually want them to open up even a little bit wider. And then they should should pretty much snap shut. And they should stay shut probably about this much and then just kind of come back to being open again. I think that's okay. 
a little slow here, so I've got to fix the feet. Okay. The other thing is, is the movement in these is too much. It's too, too far. So what I can do there is, I believe, it's a Z rotation of each one, but they might be completely in opposite directions. Hmm, let's see. Well, essentially what I want to do is just pull these down. Just hold control so that it stays without me. I'm only moving the value even if I go left and right. Okay. So now it's just more of a pulse in his teeth. It's more of a vibration. And I actually want to maybe extend it just a little bit. Like that. But very light. I don't really don't want a lot of movement in there. I can maybe do that with the with the butt too. Actually, the butt can do something interesting. Got to drag this up and find where it is. Okay, it's basically all three of them um, to get this movement. Unfortunately, I it would be nice if I only had to rotate it left and right. But the idea is that what you do is after a while you just move it down a little bit and then remove a keyframe then move it down a little bit then remove one then move it down a little bit and you can kinda of do the same thing here so you just hold control when you do it move it up then hold alt to get rid of it and then just do that and just kinda of lessen it over time and you can get these like you know it kinda of, it's like a swirl that gets thinner and thinner and thinner it almost looks like a tornado on its side um, uh, that can give you these cool effects where they go just kind of trails off uh, and and it can work so I'm gonna try it I don't think it's gonna be very noticeable because this is so short oops let me make sure I get right on that white keyframe there again gotta I should be closer probably like that and you can actually you know see that there's a there's a curve here as well that we're doing Okay, it's oscillating back and forth, but we're still trying to drive a general curved flow here. So let's see if it feels like it's trailing off before it stops. Kinda. I mean, like I said, it's it's so short and snappy already that it is kind of hard to tell. But it is actually happening. There's a little bit of a less of a wiggle right at the very end. You know what I'm saying? So it should work, I think. All right, let's try to fix this guy's movement. So our our moment of striking is at frame 45. That's our moment of impact. So, clean this stuff up. Some of these keyframes aren't adding anything to the curve. In fact, they're they're harshening it. But what I could try is pulling that closer. So everything's at 40. Yeah, it feels better. Okay, still too much of this. Too slow here. I'm trying to think how I really want to do this. Because I'm looking at the motion, right? I got this very gradual, right here you can see where he's going, uh, it's real slow coming back. It's a very long swooping curve right here is why that's happening. So, question is, is do I want to shorten this segment? and have the drag part see how he can it kind of feels like he drops now but I don't know I 
It's not too bad. Okay, now his head's completely out of sync. Yeah, I gotta get rid of that head movement because it's I can't concentrate on anything else. I don't actually want to get rid of the keyframe. I don't know why I don't, but I don't. Okay, that's better. Well, maybe I, I do want it like looking up though. Well, when he's finished, he's looking down, so I gotta finish him looking down no matter what. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Let's give it a play. Okay, here's the other thing I want to do. As this is going through its shaking transition back and forth, I also want it to be rotating up like this slowly, just to about there. So, if I look at all of these here, I can see which one moves. It's the green one. See that? See the green one moving? Okay. So what I do is I come here, and I do the same general thing that I did before, except now, let's um, give myself a little bit more room here. Oh, my mouse. Damn it. Razor Mamba Tournament Edition, ladies and gentlemen. A round of applause, please. Does that every day, at least once. Just disconnects itself. Okay, so what we're going to do is, over time... Shit, this might be a little difficult. Let's, um... Let's scale horizontally. It's going to make it a lot easier. We're only dealing with this segment now. Okay, that should be better. Uh, now we want the move keys. Okay, so essentially, instead of moving them both towards the center, we're going to move them all up over time. And then just remove a keyframe each time you move them up just a little bit. Yeah, it doesn't have to be even. It can be kind of a sloping curve if you want. But keep an eye on your trajectory here. Again, I don't want to go too far. I actually am going to be honest. I'm not seeing much difference here at all, so this might need to be actually fairly drastic. Even that. How many degrees am I looking at here? One degree. Okay. Um, let's do this again. We gotta go pretty, pretty far here, actually, because to be honest with you, this is gonna not work. <laughs> this is not gonna fucking work. I'm sorry. I, I mean to swear, but it's a perfect time for it. it, it this shit is not gonna work. Um, the thing is, I need it to go 30 degrees and try to match this kind of oscillation. My better bet is a better bet. Let's uh, let's go ahead and undo for a little bit here, so we get about straight. Um, that's fine. If I want to do that from zero to 30, um, we we'll add a new layer for that. And I'm going to call this ATK Butt Raise. And that's all it's going to be uh, in control of. And now I can literally just go like this. And it will shake as it does it. Right? That's so much easier. I mean, I, I like I said, I could have done it, but the fact is, is I'm waving it back and forth by only one degree. And then I want to try and do this 30 degree turn up that's the the curve is going to be so far away and slopey that it's going to be impossible for me to know if I'm 
within the oscillation range. I'll, I'll never be able to see it. Hopefully you guys can actually understand what I'm talking about there. It's kind of difficult to explain. So there we go. All right. Um, and then I guess at the moment of impact, which is over the course of that, we're going to go uh, like that or so. And then about here, that's got to be up out of the ground. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and lock in the final keyframe, which should be the same as the first one. And then here, we'll just let it drag on the ground just a little bit. He's spent a lot of energy right there. Now he's kind of tired, so he's kind of has to catch himself, but he doesn't have really the energy to lift his butt until his body comes up and takes it with it. Okay. Something like that, right? Theories, theories, theories. Okay. I almost don't have to fix the rear legs because the way that they're doing that, but I'm gonna. Uh, so we'll add another one. I know these are all going to be kind of in the same group, and the, and what they don't have here is uh, um, like a way to group them, you know, like to group them all together or something. It would be kind of interesting if this could be a full-fledged like. Because think about all of the programs that we have that deal with layers. And in groups, I mean, Substance, Photoshop, even Max with layers and, and things, uh, everybody uses it, you know? And being able to group stuff is also handy. So maybe that'd be something that they could add. But will they? Who knows? So we're going to do another local adjustment layer, and this is going to be called ATK Feet, because it's just going to fix the feet. And we can turn this, these, this off if we want to do a running attack. Or we can do attack feats run if we need to do something different, you know? Because remember, his body's lurching around. We may need to actually remove a little bit of the lurch. So we may need to do some run attack adjustment a little bit here and there. Who knows? We'll see. But I do know that I want all these guys, all six of them, to be locked in their places. Okay, so at frame. 30, I think what I want to do is have him move his feet back just a little bit, but what I want to do is have those happen at different times by copying this keyframe. and this one and then in the halfway point I just move it up okay so that actually was me being gone for like a couple of hours so I'm kinda trying to reassociate myself here with what I'm doing got the feet coming back right and then at 40 I want the feet to still be in the same position so let's go ahead and dupe that keyframe to bring them back so they're still planted Okay, so he takes a step back. I'm wondering if I should do something with his feet too. Oh, what the? Oh, sh shit. I wasn't on auto key when I adjusted this. That was unfortunate. Okay, so they're sliding back into place right now, but I still I may want them to Or maybe I want them to do that here. raise up a little bit maybe now 
and then what I'll do is I'll have him go out and then he'll come down so let's zero those out here so and then they should um, stay there and walk back into place right so let's get where they're gonna be which is back to original and we'll do them one at a time so you're gonna be back to the original both of them are gonna sit there for at least 10 frames so that they catch himself right then this one I think will go first and then this one will actually go second okay so he walks back into place so he takes a step back this part right here feels very weak Try spreading these out so they don't pass through the body so much. Too much um, forward here, I'd say. Because from here, they're going almost straight down. So either they need to come down more forward at this point, which means I have to adjust all this, or at this point they're not as forward I don't want the legs to play a huge role in it I think the legs, I lost them actually, I think they're going too fast so let's fiddle with the curve editor Oh yeah, it's not Z, remember it's all weird. Yeah, it's X that makes it go up and down. It's fucking weird. Let's smooth this out real quick. Okay. I'm gonna have this one delay a little bit. I'm gonna hold control to move this five frames forward but I want to hold shift so I can break this so it comes down with a slam instead of a soft. It shouldn't decelerate before it hits here. It should be going full speed when it hits the ground. He lands one foot at a time but let's fix this one. Hold shift so I don't break the other side. We'll just have that come to more of a slam. And what I'm actually thinking is evening this out. I'm going to pull this back two frames. Hold shift and I'm going to extend that just a little bit. I think they need to come more forward, which I think is the Y position. Yes. Okay, so I should be able to do this to get his foot to lunge more forward. I should just be able to pull this up, and that should just make that landing point be more forward. And I can smooth this out and this out.
Okay, it still walks back to the same point. I'm not sure I want to do this one forward as well. Maybe it looks better with one foot that goes way more forward than the other. That's not way more. Could feel a little bit more natural though. Maybe I'll do it just a little bit. All these keyframes that you see that are just like not really doing anything, you know, it's sometimes, it, a lot of times, it's way better to just get rid of them um, when you're done. I mean, like this kind of thing right here, I wouldn't necessarily get rid of because it would be kind of nice to be able to come right here and just make a small change. And if you get rid of all these, the change will start translating from way back here, you know? So sometimes on these straight lines it's okay, but when when it's actually um, like disturbing the shape, like in this case, this should actually be like that, like more towards the tangent, and deleting it will actually make it like that. So it's better to delete it, it's smoother. Okay. Um, yeah, that's the forward, and this is up and down. And again, up, you know, a step, you know, we're going to trans start going up slow, right? As more horizontal is, that's less movement. So very little movement, then it picks up, hangs, and then drops to almost near vertical fall, so we get a nice slam down. Now we could actually do the same thing here, same thing here, I'm holding shift to break the tangent there, okay? Let's do that on the other one too. So then the steps have a little bit more weight to them. Okay, nice soft coming out, but real hard here coming down in a big hit. I think I'm good. I didn't really do anything with the antenna. I should probably flare them out or do something interesting with the antennas, get them to spaz out a little bit, but. I think at this point, at 40 minutes, I'm going to call it. So I'll save it, I'll export it, I'll bring it into UE4 just like I've been doing by going here, control page down, or just clicking right here as long as select children is activated. Okay, um, that will work too, just like that, and then I export FBI. Okay, so here he is playing the uh, animation. It doesn't look too bad, I don't think. We look at him from about right here when he does it to you. So it comes up pretty good, and you can see the little teeth go. There's a little bit of a shake beforehand, gives you a chance to go, oh shit, I'm gonna move away, right? Okay, so we're good there. Uh, and even gonna need a montage for it, so let's create that real quick, because we need to be able to call it. Ant attack montage. This will be the ant full, and we'll just throw ant attack right on it, and save, and save. And now, what I think we should do <clears throat> is put a moment of uh, damage. So let's pause the animation, and we'll zoom in here a little bit, and let's try to pinpoint the exact moment of this timeline where he actually hits, which should be right around here. Let's zoom in a little bit more. How do I move this? Oh, right click, yes, right click. So it's about here. So what we can do is we can pull this down and right here, we'll zoom in even further, as far as we can go in fact. And I'll right click right here and say add notify and this will be new notify, not play particle, not play sound, but a new notify. And we will call this ant I mean obviously it's ant bite, but here's the thing. We may want to do um frame linking. Frame linking is basically uh a turning off and on of damage during a, a particular uh, sequence of frames in, in an animation for instance uh, you know you, you think of it like a fighting game like you know any kind of fighting game Mortal Kombat Street Fighter any of them um, 
they'll, they'll, they'll have like frame links and things like that where there's a, a, s a small window during the animation where if you hit the button at the right time it actually will you know send you off into the next part of like a combo and you can say like ant bite start and then I could do another one a little bit later where I say ant bite stop so if, if you meet the requirements during a small window um, then we're okay the other way to do it which is probably what I'm gonna do here is just the one-off event okay so essentially um, we'll just say amp byte okay and what will happen is at that moment it'll just check hey am I either close enough or am I touching him or what, whatever we're gonna do I'm probably gonna do a distant uh, just a simple distance check to make sure that the that the damage can go through at, at the moment of impact because it's not fair to say hey the ant got to me and now I'm gonna play the uh, play the um, animation and hit him guaranteed that's not fair because I'm giving them this anticipation time to get out of the way or move or do something or kill it in time right so I have to fire the that either on a timer or much better like this right on a notify so now when the when the playhead gets this it's gonna fire whatever I want now the important thing to note about these notifies is that they are only accessible through the animation blueprint and like a dummy I opened up let me save that the skeleton which doesn't let me go the other way which is kinda dumb I think everybody thinks that's dumb because when you open it from the anim blueprint you get the skeleton mesh and animation but if you open it from any one of these you don't get the graph so basically ant bite okay it's right there uh, this is the only place where this can actually be um, like red, uh, it'll only write to here. You can't uh, receive a notify in an actual uh, separate blueprint. So if you need it, something to run in a separate blueprint, which is maybe what we're going to do here, then obviously you can just fire that from here, as long as you have a casted thing, a precasted element, like so. And self character here, I can now call a function on him to do damage to me to the rat. Okay, so I'm not ready for that yet because we need to start that here. Okay, most of this stuff should not be uh, even needed to look at. We just should be able to just go right in here to fresh. Okay, so we'll call this ant bite underscore bite here. And I guess what we'll do I'm trying to think because I could do a collision on his face, but the problem with that is um, it's kind of kind of sketchy because it could overlap other things. I mean it can overlap pawns. We can say it's all hey, it only overlaps pawns, but it could possibly overlap other pawns too, or something, and it'd be kind of weird because you'd have to store a, a, an actor in an array. It's not fair to um, the because the thing is, is the overlap will get fired way before the animation event, right? So the event will be false essentially, you know, like I'm I'm not attacking. So the event is the trigger. We need we need to have the check already. Basically, I think we need to do, run the check at this moment. I, I think a distance is probably going to be the best idea. So let's just get socket location real quick um, and socket name head socket I believe because I think we can test on that. I think that's fair enough to say that if you're there if that's touching you you get hit right? Fair enough. It's a little bit out I know. So that's head socket. And the question is, is what do we check to? Uh, the, you know what I'm saying? Like, like what do I check to? My origin? My one of my bones? Does he hit my leg? Does he hit my cylinder? You know? I'm kind of thinking I just got to go with the origin here and just make it seem fair so that if I'm stepped away and that should be fairly consistent I think but the other thing is is what we don't have is an enemy target 
Okay, we have food piece, but we don't have enemy target, which would be probably, I think I want to say actor, such that it doesn't have to be a pawn or anything like that right now. He, the ants don't see stuff, by the way. Um, ants will completely ignore the player unless the player shoots them. So on receive damage, we're going to go ahead and do this set target. So let's see here. So we'll get actor location. Oh, I don't think I need to do that. Hang on. Ah, uh, shit. I think here. I mean, we can always get the length of this. Vector length squared, huh? I wonder what I could use that for. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll just check if this is um, less than or equal to uh, his attack distance. Bite distance. I don't want to use attack distance because I may have a ranged attack for him. By may, I mean I'm gonna. Okay, if it's less than that, apply damage. Make a bite damage variable. Damage type class. I'll just say bullet damage type now. Instigator is a controller. Okay, that should be able to tell us who, who hard is. Uh, before we do any of this, we need to do an is Vlad. Blah! I don't want to do this we don't, if the target doesn't work. I mean, that really should be about it. Gotta come off of here. Alright, so when it gets called, we just do a quick distance check, um, and then we run the, the damage. So, let's uh, set some of these real quick. Um, I'm, I'm going to be generous uh, on him for right now. I'm going to let him bite me from miles away. And then the bite damage. 10. Okay. He now needs to have an enemy target. And we need to feed this over to the blackboard. Um, on his event, take damage. Need a custom event. Set enemy target. Target. That's like yogurt. May the Schwartz be with you. All right, so set enemy target will be needs a input. New target target. I don't know why I hit the hit the. 
Oh, there's a pencil under my hand, that's why. Um, doo -doo -doo. New target, and that should be act. Okay. So, what we want to do is set enemy target to the damage causer. Okay. And just so we know, just so we know, um, when we run apply damage, we do always tell it that it, oh shit, hang on. We need to get the instigator. We need the instigator, not the causer. The causer is the bullet. That's a good thing I checked. That's a controller reference. Okay. We'll get the controlled pawn. You know I'm going to do it. What? All right, so because it's Vlad, Vlad Valid the Impaler. Uh, let's see, set enemy target. Um, so we get the controller, okay, and then that works. Control pawn, and then if that's valid, then basically we just set enemy target. Thought I could do that. That would have been so sweet. Okay, now. This uh, is not so great right yet because um, I don't have any way to communicate over to the blackboard. I'm not communicating over it. I have a way, but I'm not doing it. So what I want to do is I may or may not want to um, give myself an event here on my own controller that uh, can much easier talk to the blackboard because it's already been done here. So let's do it. Custom event, this will be set enemy key, okay, like that. And what we will do is we'll get the app blackboard and we will set value as object okay and that will be um, enemy actor set to actor okay and we'll feed that in now the key name we'll just make a literal name here and we'll call this enemy which means you guessed it enema okay so it's an object I can't pick actor so save I don't have my own controller already grasped Every time I get shot, I'm probably going to do this. Which means um, if I'm going to get my controller and cast it, I should do that in the begin play and store it. Because um, I don't even think I have begin play. Oh, yeah, I do. See, I cast my. Um, and in BP so I could talk to it but I don't get my controller and then we'll promote that to amp PC for player controller
every once in a while this can dicker and other things will try to fire before this gets going through like um, sometimes <coughs> the hell is it oh I get I don't think I can do that from from inside a player controller wait no event possessed yeah event possessed is another way to run stuff and that's at the moment that it, you know he takes possession but I could never figure out which ran first um, because I think I actually put um, begin play ran and then event possessed ran I think at one point it actually flip flopped on me but I could have dreamt that so that happens to me sometimes confused realities all right, so let's see. That should be fine. We set the NPC. We've cast it. We're good. We can do stuff with it now. Good. So NPC. This will be set enemy key to. I don't even really need to store this here, but I'll do it anyway so he knows whether or not it's. active and at this stage the way it's working right now is as soon as he's pissed at me that's it it's on he's coming and there's gonna be no end in it he's gonna chase me down forever until one of us dies uh, but that's okay that's actually how I want it to be right now I don't want any decision making yet okay so we do set the enemy actor to the set enemy key correct so that should happen when he takes damage without dying it should set the enemy key. Okay, with the from the instigated by, which should be me when I shoot him. That should come in as me, my player controller. And when I do get control pawn, that should get my character. That should be valid because I just fucking fired the gun. Uh, and then I set this for no reason, and then we do this, which takes in that enemy actor and sends a value to the blackboard key. So now everything else should be in the behavior tree. Oops. We'll throw a decorator on a sequence and this will be enemy is set okay and what we will do is I don't think that this um move to thing here can take a key see how it's only self actor here for some weird ass reason Like, this is the weird thing here, you know? Like, I should be able to say, hey, move to the thing, and I shouldn't have to make my own new task for this. If I just want him to move there right now, that's all I want him to do is just chase me for right now. So we'll make a new one. Got to go rename it. This will be chase enemy. Okay, this is going to be the command to send him over there. So receive, execute, AI. AI move to um, get value as actor. Let's go ahead and promote that. Enemy key, just make sure it's public. Target actor. Acceptable radius for now will be 50.
Okay. I think that's okay. I should get him to move there fairly immediately. Um, we're going to need a service to check a few things while we're chasing down the enemy. Now the question is, there's a lot of ways to handle this, um, is how... Oh shit, I didn't even open the map. How um, adept are they at uh, tracking my ass down? Because if I just tell them move to me constantly, uh, that basically makes them 100% adept at it. They know exactly where I'm at, and they're coming right for me, um, and I cannot hide, I cannot get away. I mean, I can get away, but I cannot hide, right? They're just going to come towards me. The other way is maybe they can lose sight of me. And if they lose sight of me for too long, uh, then they will just lose me and go back to what they were doing, or they'll stop, or they'll go check where the last they saw me. I mean, there's a million, billion, zillion, trillion, godzillion things we could do here, um, and which is right is just based on what you want your, your guys to be able to do. Now, in this case, given the game mode, given the, given the specific game mode where it's essentially um, your... your you know, protecting this one kind of spot. Maybe I may or may not, you know, select all these and and dupe dupe a new group over here and over here, so that you know there's different spots to have to defend, right? Uh, but for the most part, if I piss an ant off, I kind of want him to just come after me. And the map is going to be like this. There's not there's not going to be any real hiding. There's going to be a few. It's almost going to be exactly like this. Instead of this big ass box here, is going to be a picnic basket. You know what I'm saying? And they'll be coming from around the other side of this thing. And it won't have physics, you know, that kind of thing. I still haven't made the map yet, but I will. So, uh, what, how are they, you know, are they going to be able to lose me after they get to, after I've pissed them off? That's the question. Are they coming or not? You know? Uh, I mean, obviously they should charge at me in the very beginning, which is what they're doing here. And, but they're only given the one time shot. Now, they'll keep chasing me. The cool thing about AI Move 2 is you would think, oh, well, what if I move? Um, this thing is, is um, it's, I don't know what you want to call it, latent? It's constantly running. It's, it's, if, if I move, it's going to move me too because it's, it's looking for the target actor. This whole system, the navigation system, if I run around, I only need to tell him to move to me once and I can run, a, run away from him for forever and he'll keep trying to get to me. Once he does get to me, though, he'll never try it again unless he's told to. Okay, but if he doesn't make it to you, as long as he doesn't have one of these things happen, he should uh, eventually you just keep going and going and going for hours and hours and hours if you really wanted to. So, given that, I kind of want him to be. I kind of want to be like, uh, you know, like I want this guy off me. He's never gonna leave me alone until I kill him. Or what if I'm out of ammo? You know, it, it might be annoying. I need a way to get. I need a way to lose him. And I think it might just be distance, simple distance, because there's going to be a lot of these guys. So if you get too far away from them, uh, they don't go for you, which kind of means if you shoot them from too far away, they won't go for you. Or they'll go for you for a split second, but they'll realize you're too far away. That's the, that's the thing I don't like about distance. You know? Or maybe if they're outside of that distance, first they want to get within it, right? That's the first thing they want to do. Hey, I'm 5,000 units away. I need to get within 1,000 units of this dude. Now I'm going to charge within 1,000 units of dudes, and I'm going to keep chasing them. However, from this point forward, since I breached this barrier, if I ever go back, if I ever go back court farther than 1,000 units away, um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give up because he's he's just too fast. You know, that That's an option. I think that's probably the option. Move into radius, and then at that point, keep tracking me down. But if you do lose that radius at any point after you've moved into it one time, Go ahead and lose me. That way, if I shoot him from a million miles away, he does come after me. That's important. I think that's a good idea. So I'm going to do that part of the code uh, in the next one, and I'm not going to test this stuff yet. Well, you know what? Let's at least test, right? The, the, the video's gotten on real long. Let me just see if he's going to even chase me. I don't think he will. Nah, he, did, he didn't even get mad. Someone took, you know, it didn't succeed. Okay, um. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna put ouch here because it means he got hit, but I'm gonna go all the way here and see if it's making it. He said ouch. 
Oh, I know what I did wrong. I know what I did wrong. First off, I never even <laughs> called the fucking task. I, I never, I just never went back here and fixed it. That's all. Um, ant. See, I, I forgot to name it ant chase enemy. And I gotta make sure that that was correct. Um, and that should be enemy. He said ouch. Okay, for this, control shift A and then hold control and then delete. I only want one of them because I don't want to be having to deal with this. So what I really want to see is this. Um, shift F1, let me eject real quick. trying to make sure I can see this. Okay. <laughs> Enemy. One player, C3. Oh, oh, I know. I didn't abort anything. I'm being super impatient. That's the problem. Not self. Lower priority. And it doesn't abort anything, so what is it going to do? He's still not mad at me. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, he is. He's mad. He's on my shit. It took him a little while to come after me, though. Why, why did that happen? Is he having to finish his wander? I think all of these may want this to be not set and on value change I think we should abort ourselves. Doesn't that seem feasible? So to cut, copy and paste, you click on it, control C, and then to paste, just click on one of the ones that already existed. And if there wasn't one there, I think you can click in that little gray spot where you normally right click. Okay, so enemy is not set, so he'll he'll worry about the food stuff. He'll worry about the food. However, if he has the food, okay, actually think that I want to flip these. Oops. Now, it doesn't update the order. You can see that I'm 0, then 1, then 2. So starting in the middle, going to the left. But um, when I save it, it just fixes that for you. OK, so enemy is set. And I'm going to actually add another one here. Oh, so you right click right here. Okay. Add decorator, blackboard. This one will be um, has food is not set. Okay, um, and that way, if he has food, because if he has food, I want him to return that thing no matter what. He's just going to keep trying, even if he's dying. That's his main thing, right? He's stealing the food, so he'll sacrifice himself if he has to, and then hopefully he gets it back far enough and another ant can pick it up and take it back and it gets closer and closer to their home, right? And everyone that picks it up. Eventually they're picking it up really fast. So this should work and then the cool thing is I think because I was thinking maybe I check here, hey do I have, am I holding food? And I don't do this if I'm holding food. But no, I actually want to still set my target. I want to do all this. Remember all this does is just goes down a string of events to eventually end up here at the blackboard, right? That's the whole point. So what we do with it is actually all here. And I think this will be cool because what will happen is um, after he returns the food, he's going to be like, all right, you son of a bitch. 
I remember you. And guess what? I ain't got no food in my face. And I'm a coming. So let's see if that works. Let's see if I can get him to pick up some food, shoot him once, and let's see if he comes after me after. He should come after me right now, and I need to test that real quick. It takes him a second, doesn't it? And he's doing some weird turning stuff. See that? He's doing some weird turning stuff. I think I have my turn in place animation reversed. He's playing the turn the other direction. I have that son of a bitchin' thing reversed. All right, I'm gonna let him get the food. I think I had it reversed. Maybe I just have it stupid, and I gotta fix the way I'm doing the turn in place. That hurt? He's like, yeah, it hurt. Come over here. I'll show you what it hurt feels like. I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna vibrate at you. So I haven't done the attack yet, obviously. Um, I don't like that he does that. I think I don't think he can get within 50 units of me. See, see how he's actually still following me. The reason is, is because he actually cannot um, he cannot get within the acceptance radius. If he could, uh, I don't know what he would do. Actually, what would he do? Nope, let's return food. Uh, he'll go here, which uh, basically. We'll just keep running this over and over again. You can name these too if you want. You know, like that. Uh, can be handy. So let's see. Yeah. Um, what I'll have to do is when he succeeds here, when he gets to me on success, uh, will be when he goes to run the attack. Uh, but I'll do it in another video because we're at like a minute. Uh, uh, yeah, we're at a minute twelve seconds here. So as you can see, it's getting kind of long. All right, hit pause. Signing off. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one.